Come and take charge with me tonight. God bless you, brother. Good evening, friends. I am very happy to be back in California again tonight with you people. Thank you very much. Thank you kindly, and God bless you. I appreciate that. There was quite a struggle this time uh, coming back, not to come back to you, but uh, under the circumstances, I was kind of hard for me getting in, but I wanted to live true to my promise that I had promised you people. Uh, being another meeting in the city, uh, Mr. Freeman's meeting, and I was doing nothing out of it, and I was asked to cancel this meeting because of it, and after I had promised you I'd come back, I, I couldn't do that, and I hope it doesn't hurt for the No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> I think someone is. I don't know which the place before it gets here. It's my birthplace, isn't it? Well, God bless you, sister. Are you the same way you would draw the other? Yes, thank you. Very, what is your name? Yeah. 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 In my birthplace, she came. And my almost two years ago, the sixth day of April, that's where God gave me my life on the earth, beginning at that place. And it's so sad in here. Here's Ruth Brooke and Tuffy, and she's probably got the picture out of the book in front of you. And I certainly appreciate someone like that. Thank you very much. God bless you. And maybe God had you a palace to live in when you cross the river on the other side, sister of my sister. I shall take this home, and it will always be a treasure of mine as long as I live. I'll remember this memorial and thank you. God bless you, sister. I will not get to see. That's it. 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 And place and children down there <laughs> and say, come from California. Well, this is the beginning of another meeting in our trust, or even be a greater meeting than the other one was because of his glory. And I'm so happy to be here with you all again tonight. You want a place in my heart? It will always be. I thank you very much for your time. And now, we do not wish to be doubling a meeting that I was speaking of, Brother Freeman's meeting. Uh, I've never met Brother Freeman, no doubt a real Christian gentleman, and I didn't know nothing about his meeting coming. And uh, I just got a letter a few days ago, just before, the day before I started out here, uh, something about asking if we could cancel this meeting. I sat down and I thought it over, and I thought, well, I promised those people I would be back. And if they're just, if I just stay a few days, I'll keep my promise to someone who's kept their promise to me. And I, I appreciate your loyalty. And may God bless our brother Freeman. Give him a great meeting while he's in the city. And I know he's up against a whole lot, but having a tent up and so forth. And I'll just do anything that I can to help his meeting along. For I uh, love the brethren, all of our brethren, without preaching the gospel and trying to help uh, get somebody uh, in better health or, or get their soul right with God. There's nothing any greater than that to try to help somebody along. And we trust that this, that our meeting won't interfere anything with Brother Freeman. And now we are start our regular services tonight. We are just don't have any set time. We're going on just as long as we can. I've got to go to Branch Pass and then back over in another part of California. And then we go to Des Moines Highway, Sherlock Falls, and from there to Toledo, the Memphis area. And then I follow Billy Graham of Memphis. And, uh, and then I guess from there to Shreveport, and then to 
Southern Rhodesia, Africa, you know, up in the Indian, back to Jerusalem and back home again around Christmas. Good Lord, it's really, I don't know, he made me here before, but I have no idea what he wants me to do. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
seen many of them being to the full gospel church. Many times, I guess, that, and I'm no judge, but many times people maybe act like that they just got the Holy Spirit when they really haven't got it because their, their life doesn't prove it, you see. That. It just isn't there. <laughs> and they may uh, shout like the rest of them, and they may make demonstrations like the rest of them, but if they don't live the life to back that up, then it's, it's not right, you see. It's, it's true. And someone asked me not long ago on that question, Brother Brown, do you really think that they are shouting under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit? I'd say that. Uh, you say, well, how could the Holy Spirit fall upon them if it's, uh, and make them shout if they aren't uh, the blessed of God? Well, I believe Jesus in Hebrews, the sixth chapter, said that the rain come off upon the earth to, to prepare it, to bless it, and so forth. But in the field, the soil went forth and sowed seed, and they were good seeds, but an enemy sowed thistles and thorns and so forth behind it. And when the rain fell upon a wheat field, why, well, it watered the thistles and thorns just the same as it does the rest of us. That's right, it's the same function of the Holy Spirit. Sinners sometimes get happy and free, but that still doesn't mean they're saved. You have to be born again to be saved. Now, when they, now Jesus said, let them grow together. And at that day, as he spoke in Hebrews 6, that the thorns and thistles, which was in the wheat field, would be gathered and burned the, to the judgment. But the, the fruit, of course, we are known by our fruit, the way we live. And now the same thing is by divine healing. Now, many brethren are, have a way that they probably lay hands on the sick, or I've seen some of them shake them, and some of them put their hands on them, they fall down on the floor, and, and, and different ways like that. I, I do not know, I, I cannot say, um, that God works in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. And God is working as long as the people are getting healed and they're appointed to Jesus Christ. Amen. See? Now, you're not wrong, I've seen a, a brother who was stomping his foot real hard trying to make a, a demon go out. Now, I don't believe you to scare you. I don't believe you to <laughs> No, he... When I don't believe we, the thing we have to do, if I can get your audience to see this right now, that to be healed is just as sound and solid as the faith in God that does the healing. And you must be built first upon the Word of God. Because when the storms come, it'll never move from there. It'll stay there. If you know first that Jesus Christ taught divine healing and give it an issue to his church to practice it until he returns. Then you'll see that it is. Uh, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. These signs shall follow them and believe. Why? If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Now that, that's his last word. He was taken up into heaven, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And the gospel never comes by word only, but through power and demonstrations of the Holy Spirit, you see. So it's to demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, each one of us. Now, by the, acting upon our faith in God for divine peace, so that, and other things, we get these blessings. So now, all the things that it's done is the people to believe God's report of it and believe it. Now, I, I think if you, uh, dear people, will bear with me on this just for a moment, that when our master, when the the demon of Ga uh, from Gadaria there, when he came out, this demoniac came out and saw him, he, there was no demonstration. This demon knew him. He said, we know who you are, the Holy One of God. See? Why come us out of torment us before our time comes? They recognize that still faith that he had, like virtue going from him. See? And the woman touched the hem of his garment. He felt the virtue leave him. Now, see, it's a, it's a faith, just as sane and solid as it can be, to look at the Lord Jesus and believe it with all your heart, accept your healing, and be made well. See? Now, I realize when a person is healed, oh, I've seen him scream and praise the Lord. I did too. When I was healed, I certainly was still screaming and praising the Lord about it because it was really something to me. And now, I want you all to, to do that. When God heals you, be happy. And testify and praise the Lord for it. Just keep it up. And one thing is stop fearing. Oh, the, when Jesus rose from the dead, he said, Fear not, I have overcome. Everything is, don't fear. Be ready now. 
when you're called up here, when you're sitting in the prayer lines out there, all that's the prayer line. And when you're sitting there, just be ready to receive it. Just be ready. And just when you feel that your faith is appropriated, or not enough to receive it, say, thank you, Lord. That's better. That's all. That you receive it. Don't you believe you can be saved right without coming to an altar? It's routine to come to the altar, but you don't have to be. You can be saved because you believe. You can be healed because you believe. See? And remember that no man has any power to heal anyone. And no matter how much you believe it virtually goes out of your hands and arms or whatever, it's not bad. Because Jesus has already done that. When he died at Calvary, he redeemed you from your sickness. That's right. And you have to accept it. It's the faith that you have in that that does the healing. Now, that's inquestionable, too. Because we've got thousands and thousands of evidences to prove that it's lame, blind, halt, and everything. Look at this a senator, Mr. Upshaw, tonight, saying here that was a cripple for all these years, 66 years. Look at him tonight. Be up like a little child, so full of green, he run up and shut my hands and hug me when I come in. Why, he was all, now that's the proof for one thing here. And others who have been blind and deaf and dumb. Now we know that the redemptive blessing included divine healing, so let's believe it with all of our hearts. Now the way that the blessing that comes through this, the angel of the Lord, whose servant I am, when I was a little boy, born in that little old cabin, 42 years ago, the 6th day of April, according to the Kentucky count, <laughs> they have no, no doctors, <laughs> so they just, my, <laughs> the year of the old snag rolled away up on the hill, that's the year that I was born. My brother was born in the native picking time, if you know when that was, <laughs> so that, that was the count. And uh, that's awful to say that, but it's true. And, but, that's the way it was, so I suppose I'm somewhere along there. <laughs> so, then, at that time, to the only way that I can justly say it, that God has sent some of us in the world, some to be teachers and some uh, different things. Don't you believe that? And, and some of us to be musicians and different things. And my coming into the world for the purpose that I've just found free in the last five years was to pray for sick people. Now, he told me that when he sat here, supernatural being, God in heaven is my Father. And he'll bear a record of what I say if it's the truth. God will always do that. He'll bear a record of the truth. Now, I could come here and tell you that God has been a certain, certain thing. Well, any man can say anything he wants to. But now, for a man to say anything is one thing, and then for God to, to verify that is something different. That, that, that's different altogether. And now... Uh, the only thing that he told me, if I pray for the sick people and get them to believe me, be sincere when I pray, that no disease would stand before my prayer. Now, that's true. Now, that doesn't mean that my prayer has anything to do with it. If the people say he's always had an object somewhere for people to look at or something or something. Look, the brass serpent, why would he have that brass serpent there? Some, the, wolf, the water on the pool of the Bethesda, why was that water? Why there's no virtue in it? It was just something for the people to do to step in. Jesus went and spit on some mud and made a little cake and put it on a man's eye. He didn't have to do that. Do you believe that? He picked another man's ears and spit and touched his tongue. And he had it. He didn't have to do that. It was for some symbol. Is that right? Naaman was supposed to dip seven times in the jar. Well, he didn't have to do that. It was just a symbol that the prophet gave him to do. Something to do. And God sends some of us forth to do certain things. And then we see that God has proved what he said he was to that person. And then God testified of the thing the person testified of. That makes the truth. And then we believe it. Get well. See what I mean? And I was supposed to pray for sick people. And I noticed when I was just a young Baptist preacher, why? My, the people that come up from our congregation, we pray for them, they get well. I didn't notice how any gifts the feelings and so forth. And I went out to the hospital, and I used to go out there and the nurse when they see them and say, well, you get well now. Here comes that preacher to pray for you. Well, I didn't know anything about divine healing, but when he met me and declared that I was born to do that, I still questioned about going out and meeting the public like this. And then he told me, I said, sir, they will not believe me. Because I said, I am uneducated, and I'm uh, not qualified for, to do that. And he said, I'll be with you. I mean, he was a man. I, you, how many heard the story of it? How many have not heard the story of it? Well, it was the 
just briefly to those quickly, there when I was born in this little cabin, which the writer of this book, of the book back there, the cadet, has all been tested down through critics and everything before we could publish it and so forth. That morning when I was born down there in this little cabin, he a white light about the size of a, oh, I guess about like a pan or a little larger, about like a, or something is imagine about that shape, came down over the bed about a minute or so after the midwife had laid me in my mother's arms. And the a little old window there, if you see there's no glass, we just shove the window out, and it's a little old door. And there it come in in a little old bed in the corner, a straw mattress, and shut pillow. And the people of the mountain country didn't know what it was. What happened? They all started weeping. Later on, when I was about three years old, I remember hearing a boy speak to me and tell me that I lived near a city called New Albany, and I live in three miles of New Albany. I lived there all my life. And I, I was living in Kentucky then. This is 200 miles farther north. And then at seven years old, I was packing water in some little molasses buckets while is the boy spoke out of the bush in the world when he told me never to drink or to smoke or to find my body in any way that they did work for me to do when I got older. Then he started to meet me that to moving up on me to show me things that was going to come. I was raised in a home that was sinful. My father and mother, their people before them, were Catholic. And my father and mother married out of the church and they had no religion at all. And I never was in church till I was a young man, about 20 years old, 25. That's horrible to say that. But down through life, I didn't smoke or drink or so forth. And all the way it would meet me and tell me different things was going to happen. Then when I become a minister, it got worse. And then I received the Holy Spirit and just kept going on. And then later on, my he met me, and it was a man. I was sitting in a room in a little cabin where he used to hunt at. And I was praying. And I seen the light coming in the room. It appeared visible. They had it on a picture back there. It was taken, scientifically proven and all that been through the critics and everything. And they, they brought it into the, uh, the government affair, uh, checked it, and so forth. And then this come, it comes in the meeting many times while we're having a meeting, just like this right here now. And um, so this time, when it came, I just seen a light shining on the floor, and it comes across the floor, walking to me, a man, some 200 pounds, dressed in a white robe, had dark hair, thin shoulders, very pleasant sort of a man. And I could not move, I just shaking so. And he, I heard his voice all ever since I was a little boy, but I'd never seen him but a whirlwind and different, and a pillar of firelight. And I, when he got real close to me, the man did, when he spoke, he said, Do not fear. I knew it was the same man, the same voice that talked to me since I was a little boy. And he said, I am sent from the presence of Almighty God to tell you that your peculiar birth and life has been to indicate that you're to pray for sick people, to take this to all the world. And said, if you will be sincere when you pray and will get the people to believe you, nothing shall stand before your prayer, for this cause you were born. Now, I can only be honest, you see. I thought I've always tried to be honest and with my people, with God's people, my friends. And I, I said, well, sir, I'm... Uh, born and raised in a poor family, and I said, I'm uneducated, and I, I, I couldn't go, he said, I'll be with you. And I said, well, I'm, they wouldn't believe me, but as the prophet Moses was given two signs to vindicate his ministry, his sending to Israel, you know, to deliver Israel, said, so would you be given two signs, said, one of them will be that you'll take people by the hand, knowing nothing of what's wrong with them, and tell them what's wrong. So then if you'll be, if you'll be reverent, and said, it'll come to pass later that you'll know the very secret of their heart. And he said, if you would question of this, just by saying the spirit that our master said, that was up on him would be up on his people. Right. And when he told Philip, when he came to him to Samuel, he said, I see you. So when did you know me? He said, before Philip called you, when you were under the tree. See, he said, uh, he said then to the woman at the well, Samaria, Samaria woman, Samaria woman, he said, uh, uh, go get your husband. She said, I have none. He said, you have five. Now, Jesus said, these things that I do, shall you also. Greater than this, shall you do, or more, for I go to my father. That's how our brother Senator here was healed. While we're sitting here, looking at him, how far we are, he's seen a, a bench come down, right over, trying to 
just wait in that clock. I suppose he's all right. I didn't know. I seen a fish, and I seen a man there, and I seen people falling. I seen with a big kind of collar on. I seen a young man fall on a hay rack or something. I heard his back. <laughs> I talked to him, and there it went. I looked down, I found the man who was sitting back in the audience there in a wheelchair, but I didn't get it just right. I didn't see him healed. I didn't say nothing about it. I already walked in, and I already seen two people healed right here to meet him tonight. That's right. right. Standing right here now. All I know they're healed right here. That's right. And I noticed that when I was leaving the platform, I told my manager, uh, Mr. Baxter, about it, and it was just managing me at that time. And then when I went out there, I seen Mr. Upshaw, he had not for Mr. Uh, and there it was, just here he is as well. And I can only see now the first time, how many remembers the four best part of the, of the operation of the Spirit of God had come up on uh, his humble servant. You remember when I just could show the people by the holding my hand and knowing what was, you remember that part? You remember hearing me say that the other would come? You remember that? And it has, hasn't it? Okay. Now remember, it's going more than that. It's moving all the time upward. Now, he, now those things, now the people can come to the platform. I can only pray for them. There'll be all kinds of diseases. Now, it is possible and will be. Now, you remember this. This is the only thing that I can say. God said in Hebrews 11, see, God testifies with his gifts. Do you believe that? God testifies. Now, the person can come to the platform, and if I've got to get clear and stop too many points, I can use it again. And I won't use my own thoughts or mind about anything. It'll tell them what's wrong with them. Perhaps if the faith is not there right, it'll tell them the disease they got. And perhaps what they've done in life has called them reason they can't get healed. But now for the healing, it only comes through our Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody know that? Now that's all I can, I can do. Now this is it. And do you know Jesus our Master never claimed to be a divine healer? Did you know that? Now what's that Jesus said? I would just go to, uh, if some of you might go away and say, well, I don't know what kind of this, that is or what it is. Jesus said, dearly, dearly, I say unto you, when the Jews was questioning, when he healed one man left a big bunch of cripples laying there at the pool of a he said, the son of didn't have to heal himself. But whatsoever he sees the father do, that is the son of my father. Is that right? And now, if you pray out there and believe with all your heart that what I told you is the truth, and Jesus died to heal you, and you believe it with all of your heart, then God will heal you where you are in your seat. Then he will reveal it to me and let me know what you had and what's happened to you and what will be. You see what I mean? Now that, that isn't that lovely in it? Now, it's not, it's, it's just the idea that the only thing that I did foretell different things that he did that comes to pass, and many of his read in the books and so forth about even people, two, three cases now we have on record, that's absolutely been dead, he's passed away from his life. And I, I was with a lady the other day, it seems there was one, this is Hetty Walgirl, at her, she had died of cancer of the heart and the liver. And, he, and her doctor was there and said, just want to shake your hand. And then, he, she was dead, didn't she? She was laying dead in the front of her and put it up. And she, that was three years ago, and she just was well and normal as she can be. Well, one thing, I just see a vision, see what's happening. And there it is, I just act out. It's just drama to me. I just act out what he shows me to do. Do you understand now? So it's not me, it's our Heavenly Father who's showing me what in that channel where he has placed me. I use that to the best of my knowledge to help his people along. Thinking that someday when I come to the end of this journey, I may... If Jesus tarries, I hope to be able to serve his people until I'm an old man. And, and I'll do it with all the labor to my heart to him that I know how. And remember, friends, you are, I, I love you, and I must be honest with you. But I have a little boy here, little Billy. It's a, he's here on the platform or down here somewhere. I have him with me. If you want to love somebody, if it's between me or he, you love him. Mm -hmm. That's my boy. And if our Heavenly Father wants me to love somebody between he or you, love him if his children, you see. Wouldn't you let someone love your children and to love you anytime? Well, our Heavenly Father, what about him? If we be carnal, know how for good things for our children. See, and I love you. And I'm here to help you. 
And now, when he placed me in this channel of this prophetic gift, whatever it might be, I do not know. I'm, the Bible is open here before me. I do not know just what to call it in the scripture. Brother Hall and Ann speak much about it, but about it being some prophetic gift. But in there, I try to, when he places up on me, I try to glorify our Heavenly Father. And he, whatever I can to help his people, that's what I do. And God bless you. And most of my people, a lot of them have been long-life people. For instance, my grandmother, Branham, lived to be 110. My grandfather, Branham, lived to be 90-some-odd. Grandfather, Harvey, from my mother's side, lived in his 90s. But my grandmother, she died of scar flow about, about 36, 38 years old. My father died early, 52, with a heart attack. And most of my mother's people who I take after is... Uh, when you get old, real old, old, they usually get a paw shake a whole lot. I remember old granddad, he, he just shook constantly all the time, like that, especially when he get a little excited. And if I live that long, I may too. I don't know. This body wears down like an automobile wears out. But if it does, and I come to the end of my road, and I can look back and think of the meeting here in California in different places when I was a younger man. Think of all of these people, and I know that it's coming to me then, and I'm fixing to go. And I'm saying, an old man, white, what hair I have will be white, stooped in my shoulders with a cane in my hand, shaking. And I feel the waves of death coming over my soul. I want to serve his people and serve him so now, that when that time, I'll raise up my hands and drop my cane. I believe you'll come and meet me, man, to take you to a better land. Now, you pray for me. If I pray for you, God bless you, while we read just the word of Scripture, and then we'll bow our heads and have a word of prayer and go right straight into the service. In the book of Matthew, beginning with the 23rd verse of the fourth chapter, and Jesus went about all Galilee, and teaching in the synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness, all manner of diseases among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all the sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatics, and those which had palsy, and he healed them. And that called him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from and from Jerusalem, and from Judea, and from beyond God. How can we bow our heads? It's all right. If our brother has accepted his healing, it's all right. God bless him. Our Heavenly Father, we thank thee that you, our lovely Jesus, is in your people tonight, making them as you are, making them a body. And if this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, we have an already waiting fashions in heaven waiting to go to. This is a step out of this old wrecked building that we live in here into a new one. But our Father, the reason that we are here tonight in these services to see these buildings and tabernacles that we have our dwelling in now, some of them are very badly ridden with diseases that Satan has been. And we are here speaking of you, the great divine healer. And Father, I pray tonight that you will deliver every one that's in the building tonight from all their diseases. And as you come forward, coming down from glory into this little building here tonight, coming from thousands and thousands of angelic beings there tonight before you, and you will promise that wherever two or three were gathered together, that you would be in their midst. How wonderful to think that the Lord Jesus is here with us tonight and to grant to us anything that we desire. And Father, my desire is tonight personally that you will magnify yourself before the people and this day to let them know that your spirit, that your word, that your promise, oh Master, your promise, it is written in the scripture that you heal the people that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken by the prophet. You did these things that it might be fulfilled. And, O oh Lord God of heaven, these things we do tonight that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken by our Master, these things that I do, he said, shall you also. He knew the hearts of the people. He knew what was wrong with them. And his spirit is here. He healed the people. And, Father, this is tonight to fulfill. 
which was said by our master, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And grant, Lord, that you'll stand tonight, your great divine angel, your healing spirit. Maybe it's the same angel that was on the pool of Bethesda. We do not know. I do not know him, Father, in that way, his name. Maybe it's the same angel that saw the children of Israel that led them in in a sign of a pillar of fire. Maybe that's the same pillar of fire that we're looking at. Maybe he shares tonight. I trust that he will be, and will show great signs and wonders. And may there come a stirring among the people quickly, for we realize, Lord, that we just have a few days to be here. God bless our brother Freeman. Lord, you see how these, I don't know how it happened this way, but thou does know. And I pray, God, that you'll bless him tonight and give him a great service down there. And may many, many of those people down there be healed tonight. The lame walk, the blind see, the deaf hear, the dumb speak. Oh, people be saved. And grant it, Lord, that there'll be a great stir down there in the tent tonight. Many, many hundreds of people be healed and saved. And Father, grant tonight in this little group that it'll be likewise here for your glory that you might receive glory and all these people around in the city here might know that you're the Lord Jesus and healing and saving and soon coming. We believe the end this year is close. When we see the signs appearing, we know that you're near your journey back here. God bless us tonight and send your angel to discern these spirits and to cast them out of the people by the name of your child, Jesus Christ, we ask it. Amen. God bless you all. And may he add his, his tender mercies to you. Let's um, begin our prayer line over to the right here. Let's call up the first uh, group. And, uh, and uh, what, you, what numbers did you start? From 50 or from the one? One. Let's begin at one. Take the first uh, ten over here. What's your letter? The F. F. One to ten. Stand up first, and and then maybe if we get finished, while well, we'll have some more in just a few moments. And now you is sitting near. If if you didn't believe me, this, now I don't want to say believe me. That I don't mean that by just I'm just the least among all of you. I'm your brother. And not worthy to be called your brother. That's right. And I, I don't say that to be humble. I say that from my heart. I've learned this, friends, that God knows what your heart is. And if you don't speak from your heart, then you're a hypocrite. Is that right? And I really mean it. Some, I look out here and see you old people who've had the Holy Ghost for years and fought back there when it was hard. And me standing here much younger than you and just my when you had to stand on the street corners maybe have four or five listen to you and some of our meetings run up to 35 and 40 thousand. See? Well, my, we're just well, run the highway that you've already paid for us. See? We're not worthy to be called your, your, your brethren. But you pray for us now. And as you believe, having faith in God, asking God to help you and so forth, God will grant it to you. You believe that? Now, there are, sometimes I have to Wait just a little bit now. Under all of you understand, this being the first night, I'm going to pull these mics out a little bit because talking to the people sometimes, they don't pick it up. And um, now, at the close of the service, we may we have no certain definite time. We may be here three nights, we may be five nights, we may be eight or ten nights for all I know. I don't know. That depends on how the Holy Spirit moves. And uh, if uh, that's right, only believe we are slowly. And you, um, and you pray for us now, and, and God will, will grant you, your, your healing and so forth. And I guess these brothers here, you're taking recordings. Is that, is that right? Fine. I just, I, when the Spirit of the Lord is on, it's so sensitive. Just any little thing, you're always very sensitive. How many realize that? Just real sensitive. If something moves contrary, or, would you ever a deeply sincere praying somewhere and somebody step in the room or slam the door? See? Now that's what it is when this anointing comes down. I feel it moving in from out here and out there and around here. That's the reason I asked him to leave the platform in there so that I can have at least just one side because it's hard. Maybe there's such a person with a cancer and that's coming in just 
and here's one thing here, maybe with heart trouble, and then here's them two hitting against me. And see, you can see what I mean. But I thank God from the depths of my heart, with my Bible in my heart, and not one time in five years has it ever failed to be the solid truth I put back on. Not one time. And I'll take anyone to record here in the building. It's been in my meeting time after time. It has never failed to be exactly the truth. That's right. And and then if the patient hasn't got a good faith, well, then it'll maybe take a little time to build them up. You'll have to tell them something else and get them talking. Now, let's just kind of pray again just for a moment, if you will, because I've been talking and it makes it kind of odd for me. Now, dear Jesus, now we're here and we've asked you, I've explained all that I know how, and it's getting a little late, we don't want to wear your people. But now, Father, I try with all my heart to let them know that you are here and willing to heal each one. Now, I have told them that you have sent your humble servant to encourage them to believe on your son, Jesus. And by signs and wonders that you have given me to perform is for their encouragement and the vindication that thou hast sent thy humble servant to pray for their diseases and afflictions, and they will get over it. I've tired, I've done all I know how. And now I've committed all to you for a great service this coming, this week. Grant it, Lord, beginning tonight. May many of the people in the audience just believe with all their heart when they see the evidence of the great angel of God, which I know is on the platform now. And may you move up to thy humble servant now, anoint thy human body, that Jesus will be manifested before the people. Hear my prayer, Father, for I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
speak a word. The man has been in an awful condition. And, of course, it was too low here for you to hear what was going on. But the man has been in a terrible condition ever since a little boy of about seven years old. And he's had just couldn't, he's been fasting and praying for this tonight. And he was warned, and so he came, and God has delivered him. He said, could I just speak a word on the I want to tell this audience, people, that God dealt with my heart when I was seven years old. God called me, and again, God called me when I was about 14 years old, and I wouldn't yield to the Lord, didn't do it, and at about 17 years old, I defied my body, and I lost favor with the Lord, and I sought Him, and I sought Him for years since then. And when Brother Brandon was in Miami, Florida, three years ago, last February, I believe, uh, I was convicted and wanted to get rid of that demon that had possession of me. And uh, I felt that going forward to speak the first night I was in service, and the devil cheated me out of it. And I wouldn't do it. But when I went to Jeffersonville, Indiana, from Atlanta, Georgia, to get the deliverance, and I got to Jeffersonville, and Satan beat me out of all other there. Well, then I come to San Bernardino last October to get the deliverance of this demon that had me bound. And uh, the devil cheated me out of it then. So February come up leaving this year, and he had the uh, healing campaign here. And I come here every night to Brother Bam's meeting, and I felt ready to just come up the first night, and I wouldn't do it. I just choked it back. And I refused to come. Well, the Spirit just left me then, and I worked under the very imps of hell, and just been torturing torment. I worked on my job ever since February. Well, I just resigned two weeks ago and left my job and come into town. And I've been fasting and praying. And there's a sister, there's a sister prophesied over me and asked me to come to Calvary Temple and to tarry and to fast and see if I couldn't get deliverance of my troubles. And I didn't tell her what it was and nothing to sort. She just prophesied over me. I've been fasting and praying and seeking that I could just come to Brother Branham and get this demon cast out of me. I made a confession several years ago, and I feel like my soul was saved. But this demon kept me bound. I wanted deliverance, and God wanted me to carry his gospel for him. But this demon has had possession of my body. I've been afflicted from the sole of my feet to the very crown of my head. I went for years and years on public work, tortured with Satan. Although I was trying my best to confess God, and I stayed as close to God as I could, and I just seek deliverance with all my soul. I sought the Holy Ghost for years. My wife has had the baptism of the Holy Ghost over 20 years now. And I sought and I sought, and my friends and my wife prayed for me, and I couldn't receive the Holy Ghost. But thank God tonight, uh, uh, the Lord went to be with me when Brother Brown come in there, when Brother Brown come on that platform here. The glory of God shone so in his face, Brother Harvell, I couldn't look at him hard. The, the brightness of God was so bright upon Brother Brown. And uh, I just had to bury my face in my handkerchief. And I just sat back out of the Tammy's election. I just had to bury my face. I'd look at Brother Brown and there's such a shiny glory in that man's face and I couldn't look at him hard to bury him. And I want you to know I've been striving with all of my heart to serve God and just to stay as close to God as I could. But this old demon that has control of me is Brother Crockett and just pull him and pull him and pull him and pull him. And I come to San Bernardino just a purpose to get rid of it and then Satan beat me out of it. But I do thank God with all my heart. I feel like it. I'm in perfect fellowship with my God. I hate I have to take this time, but I, I say I hate it. I don't hate it either, gentlemen, because it's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me or ever could.
thank the Lord and say thank the Lord, won't you? Just say praise the Lord. Now, that is such a real worry, you know. There's just all these things. That means a lot to that man since he was a little boy has been that way. And the Lord has delivered him. Now, how did you, my sister dear? You believe with all your heart, too. Our Lord is always near to heal the needy and the, the sick. Now, a sister that was our master one time, he was speaking to some man, or perhaps I think he had a prayer line somewhere, was praying for the sick. And as the man came up to him, and he said, uh, Behold, an Israelite, which there's no sky. He told him what he'd been doing and so forth. He said, he said, how'd you know I was a, a believer, a Christian, you know, as we call it now? He said, before Philip called you, when he came the tree, I knew him. And he said, right then, thou art the Son of God, the King of Israel, isn't that right? And he believed him with all his heart. And do you believe like that with all your heart? Do you believe that? And you believe that at this, what I'm speaking of, is our lovely Lord Jesus who loves you and wants to make you well. Is that right? But, and you believe that he knows what's been in your life back before him. And he knows right now what's wrong with you right now. And he knows what will be here after, isn't that right? But I believe right now that you're in a balance right at this time. Because as soon as I said that, I've seen something happen and seen what's wrong with you. That was a tumor, aren't you? Isn't that right? Uh, uh, you want to be rid of the tumor. Come, come here, Joseph. Thy flesh hands up. Our Heavenly Father, this poor sister is so in need. And I pray thee to be merciful to her now. And I bless her in the name of thy Son, Jesus, that this tumor will leave her, Lord. And, O oh, Father, be merciful at this hour. And may others be healed of tumor at this same time out there in the audience. Grant us, Lord, and may the Spirit that's here at the platform now that we are both aware of it, anointing down here at this time, we pray that you will let him bless her as I, as a, your servant, minister to her the blessings of God by laying all my hands upon her that was commanded our Lord Jesus. And I say to this tumor, leave the woman in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, sister. We'll be well. All right. I say praise the Lord. I, I look for him. He is here. Now, he will only reveal himself to those who believe him. How many... You were here in California, blessed with a great uh, observatory up here, planetarium. Or you see stars way out, I believe 120 million years of light space, you can look out through that glass, one of the largest in the world. They had those, not that tight, but they had planetariums and so forth, and stargazers in the days of Jesus. But there was a star that passed through the land, and three men followed that star, and no one else saw it but them, or they were looking for it. They were looking for the star of Jacob to rise. See, they were down in the country there where Salem the prophet had spoke of this star of Jacob and Rise. Now you look for him, believe him with all your heart. All right, uh, that's, that's, is that the patient? Is that the, the patient, son? All right, you come right up, ladies. Now, everyone, be real reverent, just as reverent as you can. You don't have to bow your heads to pray. You, I just want you to, when I ask you to bow your head, sometimes a spirit gets real contrary, and they just don't want to come at all. And that's the time you have to have an authority. Do you believe in that? Yeah. Uh, sometimes, if a person's faith will come up, but maybe they don't have enough faith, and it's just a wave in there, and they're even trying to hold, and maybe a little unbelief there, just kind of skeptical, sometimes you have to, uh, uh, to command it out. See? And if you do that, then they're angry. That's when they go from one to another. And when they come out, you know, Jesus said to them, demons come out, they said, suffers to go into them swine. See, a devil is helpless if he isn't in a body somewhere. He's just a spirit in the world until he's in a body. And then he, he can torment. Now, our sister coming here, the lady, has uh, come forward to be healed. Now, everyone be uh, just reverent. Just, here's what I want you to not say, be reverent. Just, just sit and say,
say, I believe that with all my heart. Say, Lord, I, I believe that you're there at the platform, and you're going to help our brother Branham right now. And he's going to know all about that woman, and he's going to be able to pray a prayer that'll heal the poor thing. That's what I mean, being reverent. You're saying, what if that was your sister, your wife, your mother, someone see? See, you'd, you'd want them to heal, wouldn't you? And you do to others as you'd want to do to you, you see, if you were up here. Now, sister dear, you just come near, and I just want to talk to you just a moment. And what I do that for, uh, to speak to that person, is merely to contact their spirit, you see. You realize that we're dealing with spiritual beings, isn't that right? It's a, it's a spiritual being. See, you and I are human flesh. It was born in this world. And now, you're, inside of you is a spirit, and inside of me is a spirit. Well, now, there's a spirit of sickness or something that's come up on you, and then, now, I don't know what that is. I know that you're, you're a lady standing there, and, and uh, I don't know nothing about the inside part. Now, the only thing that I know is when this spirit of God comes down here and he'll speak through here, so that's what's in you, you see. Now, first thing, if I can contact your human spirit, you see, to, to myself, that gives us a, gets you in the, the place, contact, that's right. Like Jesus, he talked to the woman a while, he said, go bring me a drink. She said, why, it's not customary for you Jews to ask us Samaritans. He said, but you knew who you were talking to. See, you would ask me that. See, and I'd give you drinks that see that you don't come here. Now that's the same thing this is. Now, uh, you, you're conscious that there's something going on now, don't you? You know that, yeah, you, you know there's something going on. A strange feeling in your inner being. Is that right? It's, it's, what it is, it's that gift of moving. It's, it's not my gift. God's gift. See, his gift. I'm not it. I'm just, it, you see the picture back there. You can see my picture too, but I'm not it. It's a separate person. But I'm just a, like a bright serpent, you see what I mean? See, just, you're just looking this way and I'm just, see, uh, that's it, that's it. That's it. You're suffering, aren't you, sister? You got kidney trouble, haven't you? That's right. Kidney trouble? You're real nervous, too, aren't you, sister? I guess I'm a little bit, but not because I thought I would be, praise the Lord. I mean, not that, uh, well, I mean, just kind of, you're a deep thinker, that kind of nervous at all, when you're thinking of head down. That's right. All right, sister, come here just a minute. Pray. I will you bow your head. Dear merciful Father, I pray that you will be merciful to our sister tonight as I bless her now for her healing. Satan, you bound her. In the name of Jesus Christ, leave the woman, come out of her. How will you do as I say do? Go on and even think about your kidney trouble no more. It's going to leave you. Now, I'll tell you what, uh, you may have symptoms for at least or eight or ten days, the burning and so forth, and weakness, but that'll clear up now, and you'll be all right. You go and God bless you. Thank you, Father. Now, Sister dear, I want you to look this way and just believe with all your heart. And you will want you, and you, you believe. You want to be well. I perceive that you're a believer, a good believer. You're not very, you're, you're a, a deep believer. You hold on to what you have. He was praying a while ago, wasn't he? And he said, wasn't you happy when you got that card this afternoon or tonight? And now you thought, I'll be rid of my heart trouble now. Isn't that right? How you can go on your road to God.
You believe, do you, sister? You, you believe with all your heart. And isn't he wonderful? Well, some of the, sometimes we get in such a condition, you know, or sickness and everything, and then God comes along and heals us, and lets us get well, spare our life a little longer. That's, that's the way he does it. He's so lovely to us, isn't that right? What a strange feeling come to you then, didn't you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your heart's all done, sister. You can go on. What a strange feeling you No, ma'am, it ain't. 
Is it stand right there just a minute? It's in this direction here. I stand right there just a moment. Let's see. Look this way, sir. You on the cot. Let's, you look this here to me. Here it is. Just a moment. Now, everyone there. Do you believe me, sir? Do you believe that I am God's servant? That I am this prophet that he sent me here for you? You're suffering with, with a cancer. Cancer. I believe it's cancer of the blood, isn't it? Leukemia is something like that in, in your blood, isn't it? And it, it's in your blood, it's leukemia, that's right. You're all, you're, I see, you're, you're swollen up inside the inward glands, the spleen, and through the kidneys and stomach. Isn't that right? Oh. Everybody reverent. Does anybody know the man in the building? Anyone know him? Is that truth? If it is, is it's truth. Is it truth? I can tell there's something moving. Yes. Well, yes, they know. All right, that's all. I just see. I just see where you are. That's okay. I just wanted. I seen it at left. I be real reverent, my brother. I, I, I'm going to ask. I see it. That's it. The, the, you go ahead, by now, sister. I thought that cancer flipped back again, and what it was is this man here praying. You see, when the cancer let loose of this woman, it hit on that man there. You see, they're they're in sympathy one with another. You understand what I mean? It's, it's, it's kindred spirit. You know what I mean? Doves, they with doves, scavengers, the like buzzards. You know, they're together, and that's why this kindred spirit, that cancer, cancer is a demon. It's a devil. That's why I be real reverent and believe with all your heart. All right. Mother's trying to pray, aren't you, Mother? Now, just to have faith for this. I see you coming down through there. I believe that the baby's going to be all right. I just, just be reverent now. I just, everyone, I don't want to be excited. See, it excites me a little, but don't get excited because I do, because I, you see what I'm up against here. I'm working under a strain. It'll, it'll come down on me, boy. And you had to watch when it's there. You see it hitting everywhere. You had to be careful. And then sometimes a jerk here and there's some over here. I'm just trying to take my time. This is, I can. All right. It's a strange feeling. Just uh, not, nothing to be weary, but it, it's something kind of an awe, sacred. Now that's that anointing that I feel. You see, it's, it's on me now. That, if there's anything wrong with you, if you believe that that is the angel of the Lord, God will reveal to me what's your trouble, and, and then you'll get well. And if you, you, you believe it's the angel of the Lord, you do. Uh, have you got, uh, you're nervous for one thing, aren't you? Really extremely nervous. I see that. Have you got something wrong with your ear or something? Is it in your, I mean, it's your right ear, isn't it? Isn't it your right ear? That's your favorite man. The one, the right, I've seen that there. So don't you work in some kind of a telephone affair? Is that right? I've seen it with that thing over your ear, like I know where it is. Yes, I didn't see no trumpet in your ear, but I could see in the vision there some or in the headset. I see it there. Yes, I see it. 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 Yes, I see Bless our dear sister now. I pray that you will be near her and may your spirit come upon her just now and bless her, knowing that there is a great supernatural being here at the platform standing between she and I here as brothers and sisters and the Lord Jesus. And I pray, God, that her faith in him to believe it, that thy servant has testified of that which is true. And there's no way for her to doubt anymore. For I have spoke of it being from you, and she witnessed it by feeding and telling her even the things of her life. Then I bless her, dear God. Satan, you find her, leave her in the name of Jesus Christ. Come from the woman. Now, this way. Oh, yes, sister. It's all right now. God bless you, sister. You're, you've been speaking for a keeper. Isn't that right? You could have had that also. God bless you, sister. Let us say praise the Lord. Isn't he wonderful? Marvelous. He, 
He knows everything. There's nothing that he doesn't know. And he's the witness. Now, if you'll just give me a few more moments to get uh, this, what's in the prayer line there, then I'll, I'll dismiss just a little bit. Would you bring the lady, please? Uh, everyone, just reverence for a few moments. And you out there in the audience, be, be praying down in this way. Up all around now. God bless you, brother. Now, would you, I, I just want you to, you look very healthy, young lady. But of course, there's something wrong, or you wouldn't be here. You're a little nervous. Yeah. Of course, that's just a little excited now, too, because it, that this is a very sacred thing to you, isn't it? You've regarded it that way. Isn't that true? And you've respected it, haven't you, sister? And you've you had that in your mind before you come here. Isn't that true? And because you have believed that, God will let you get over that diabetes. You're going to be well. God bless you. God bless you, my sister. Now you go in the Lord Jesus. Let us say praise be to our Lord. Isn't he wonderful? Now some of you hear these stretchers are cops in just a moment. You have a cop, lady. You look this way. You believe with all your heart? Uh, I cannot heal you. I don't know you. I've never seen you in my life, knowingly. But our Heavenly Father knows all about you. And He will make His secrets known to His servants as He will. You believe that? And, yes, you must believe God, or you can't live very much longer. You're conscious of that, aren't you, sister? You have a severe heart trouble. Isn't that right? Why don't you accept your healing and stand up in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Let us say praise be to God. Everyone in heaven, I believe with all your heart. I see that every step of me. Let's say thanks to Lord. Some of you are going to stretch her out of the way there. Sir, why don't you accept your healing? Thank you. 